if something suddenly happened in your life where you could now retire next Monday, what would you do? G'day, I'm Peter Fritz. I'm a landscape photographer and car photographer uh, living in Melbourne, Australia. But I'm a whole bunch more than that as well. I also happen to be a 56-year-old marketing specialist working for a couple of multi-billion dollar companies. I'm also a father of three kids, two adult daughters and one young teenage boy. I'm a husband. I'm twice divorced, twice broke. Bit of a coincidence there, maybe. And I have a lot of passions and interests. I have had a couple of blogs in the past that talked mostly about midlife, uh, but also about creating a life that you can be satisfied with, where you have some sense of control over it. And a large part of that was related to how we work and the levels of control over how we work. And before COVID hit, I actually had a, a blog called Office Anywhere, which was all about learning how to optimize remote work, culminating in a short course and a guide, which is still available on my other website, peterfritz.co, on convincing your boss to allow you to, uh, to work from home. Well, once COVID hit, of course, that whole issue kind of became moot as the whole world moved to remote work and working from home. But, of course, a lot of employees are now having to return to the office, and now that they've had a taste of remote work, wish they could return to it. Anyway, all of this to say that whilst my YouTube channel tends to focus very much on, or at least has done in the past, landscape photography, more recently car photography, but also peppered with my personal experience as a midlifer, as somebody in their mid 50s, who has been through the ringer in one way or another, financially, relationships, existential crises, midlife crisis, all that kind of stuff. As somebody who's been through a number of things, I also feel compelled to talk about those topics. So, this is a very long way of me getting to the point, <laughs> which is um, one of the lovely viewers of my channel, a fellow called Chris Cummins, suggested to me the other day, suggested to me the other day that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to just sometimes get on camera and just have a chat about stuff that you think is either interesting or relevant or might invite questions or conversation around those topics that you have experience with. So, if you are in my situation, you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, particularly in your 40s and 50s, and this word retirement keeps popping up in your head all the time, and trust me, I'm not going to create a retirement channel now, um, but I think there is a growing number of us in this age group, 40s and 50s and beyond, now watching YouTube on a regular basis, and we don't just want a 20 second dopamine hit. We don't just want a top 10 list of the best blah, blah, blah. We actually want to have, or at least feel like we're having a conversation with somebody who is in our situation, who understands us, who's been through some of the stuff that we have been through or are trying to prevent ourselves from going through. So, question of the day. And this is the point that I wanted to get to. Sorry if I took so long to get to it. If something suddenly happened in your life where you could now retire next Monday, what would you do? What things would you be suddenly excited about finally being able to do with your life? And I ask this question because this is something I think about all the time because I know exactly what I want to do. But I, I suspect a lot of people don't beyond the initial go on holidays, sleep in, exercise a little more maybe, um, spend a little more time with family, go visit my parents, that sort of stuff. I'm actually on the way to visit my mum down in the uh, little bayside village of Rosebud right now. Many, many years ago, in my 20s, <laughs> 
I got sucked into one of those multi-level marketing companies with the promise of quitting my J-O-B, my journey of boredom, and living the life of my dreams. And there was a lot of crap that came out of that process of joining, trying to make it, realizing I wasn't going to, and then quitting. But there were a couple of good things that came out of it. Most significant of which was a couple of people that I met there who were genuine, authentic people who actually just wanted to help people discover who they were and to develop the habit of reading books that would help them understand them and the human condition. Because despite all of the bullshit and blue sky attached to companies like those, I was part of an Australian business called Omega Trend, which was actually a spin-off of good old Amway by a couple of Aussies who got sick of um, who got sick of the way Amway was being run. Anyway, learning to develop the habit of um, wanting to learn more about life and about ourselves. That was a really good thing, and I still value that today. And I've gone on to read probably a, a thousand books. I reckon it would have to be close to a thousand books now because of that habit that it developed in me. And the second one was a couple of the people that I met, one of which became a very close friend, John James, who passed away a few years ago and whose passing sparked my decision to get a camera in my hand again, go out to the landscape and reacquaint myself with my lost love of landscape photography, which then led to this YouTube channel. But anyway, they used to paint a picture of the day that you finally got to quit your, quit your job. When you had reached a level in your Omega Trend business where you could finally tell your boss to shove it and piss off and ride off into the sunset. And typically the way this would work is that a couple of other people in your organization would organize a stretch limo. They'd come and rock up to your workplace, stand out there as you proudly exited your job of misery for the very last time, slide into the back seat of your stretch limo and sail off into a life of happiness and joy. Now, as many of you will either know from your own experience or from others' experience or stuff you've read that it often doesn't go quite like that. People approach retirement with uh, rose-colored glasses, I think, for the most part, thinking that it's just gonna be a life of ease, that everything will be better because they don't have to go to work anymore. But of course, we know that that's often just not true because overnight we lose our status our sense of value. We lose the um, friendships, real or imagined, that we have with work colleagues. We lose our um, sense of routine, which, as much as we may despise it, can actually be a good thing for us to know what we're doing tomorrow. Sometimes one of the most stressful things that you can experience is not knowing what to do next. And that could be something as simple as driving to work or arriving at your desk in the office with your coffee in hand and your this in the other hand, whatever it happens to be. Once we lose that routine, that can be very disorientating for a lot of people. There is a lot to be said for structure and routine. It's a bit like Swiss chocolate or espresso or nice cigars. If we have them at the odd little mile marker, the odd little point in our daily routine, they feel special. They feel enjoyable. But if we woke up in the morning, lit up a cigar, ate a block of Swiss chocolate, and basically did whatever the hell we wanted, it wouldn't feel special anymore. In fact, it would make us feel sick because too much of a good thing is definitely bad for you unless it's juxtaposed with things that we outwardly might not see as so good, but ultimately bring us the relief between those moments of pleasure, thus amplifying those moments of pleasure. So life really is a case of balancing stuff that you feel you need to do versus the things that you want to do. So the reason I pose this question is 
I've been thinking about this a lot. And if I could retire on Monday, straight away I would get to work. I would get to work on all of the things that I would desperately love to do more of. And I would create my own new routine, my own structure, my own sense of obligation of tasks needing to be completed. Because then when I indulge in those planned pleasures, whether they're a holiday at a nice resort up in far north Queensland, or they're a glass of Drambuie with my dad and a nice cigar in front of a fireplace, all those kinds of things, then those things will be genuinely pleasurable because they um, are a punctuation mark on all the other things that I do, which are routine, that I have designed as routine. So I guess you could approach this question, this question of what would you do if you could retire on Monday, from two perspectives. One is if you hate your job, and one is if you love your job. Now if you hate your job, you probably don't care what it is that you gotta do on Monday after you retire. You might think of a couple of superficial things like, that's it, I'm booking a holiday, or I'm going down to the local dealership and picking up that car I've always wanted. This is assuming, of course, that you've suddenly come into enough money that you can retire and indulge your fantasies a little bit. So you're probably not thinking too much about what comes next after you satisfy those first little urges of indulgence. But if you enjoy your job, if you recognize that even if some of your job gives you the shits and you don't really enjoy it, but that the structure around that and the routine that that gives you and the challenges that you face and the problems you are allowed to solve because of the nature of the work you do, if you decide that those things actually are worthy, are worthwhile, and that you don't resent them daily with a passion, well then, then I think it's worth really thinking about what you're gonna do next. And you're probably thinking, all right, well, what about some examples? Okay, let me tell you about what I have planned. If I retired next Monday, I wouldn't plan any holidays yet. I wouldn't go out and buy another car. Actually, that's, that's probably not true. I'd keep this, the Porsche Boxster. I love this car. I wouldn't get anything fancier than this as a sports car, at least not in the near to medium term. But I would go and change my Mitsubishi Outlander soft rotor for a more serious off-road capable but luxury SUV. And I'm thinking one of the sort of late teens, 2018, 2019, LX570 Lexus SUVs, bulletproof, beautifully made, quiet, comfortable, extremely capable off-road. Or, and this is a left to field one, I don't know how you guys think about this, but I have just very recently come to learn about the incredible feature set and functionality and capability of the GWM Tank 500. I mean, this is something that I've actually been seeing at the school pickup car park every day for the last couple of months. But my only reaction was, oh, that's a bit chintzy, a bit chromey, a bit sort of Americanized Chinese interpretation of what an SUV should be. And so I kind of discarded it out of hand. But then I saw a couple of videos on just how incredibly capable that thing is. And I was genuinely gobsmacked. And then I saw a video of a Russian mechanic who bought one and pulled it apart, not completely, but pulled out all the trim, pulled out bits and pieces, inspected different mechanical components of it, the wiring as well, all that stuff. And the thing's pretty impressive. Like, it's well made. I mean, I've been saying this for ages, that people who poo-poo stuff made in China forget that people do that with Japanese products and then Korean products, and look how far they've come. And the Chinese, I tell you, they learn quickly. They learn fast. And this GWM Tank 500 
is a seriously impressive piece of kit. I mean, back on this topic of Chinese made, you know, my Leica Deluxe 8 that I just bought recently, made in China. Um, this DJI camera that I'm filming on, China. All the DJI drones I've ever had, China. My iPhone sitting there, made in China. So this steering wheel that I'm holding for my Porsche Boxer, this fantastic steering wheel, wheels made in China, airbags made in Germany. It's well made. Anyway, so that's one thing I would probably get. I would get either the Lexus, maybe the, see I think the Prado is, the new Prado is too expensive. The GX, the new Lexus GX, we're talking 120, 130,000 Australian for the, um, for the off-road, the proper off-road one, getting a bit expensive. I'm really keen to see what the new Pajero Sport is going to be like, but we're talking late 2025, maybe 2026 here in Australia. If the renderings that I've seen of that are any indication, that looks nice, because the Mitsubishi Outlander, the new one, is a really nice looking vehicle. I really like the look of it. And if they had made a more off-road capable version of that as either the Pajero Sport or a bigger one as the replacement Pajero, which is still probably many years off, then I'd buy it in a heartbeat because they're incredibly good value, the Mitsubishi product, and they're well made. But anyway, um, so I'd do that. Just about to get down to the Esplanade along the water's edge, down here in Rosebud. Lovely part of the world. Miserable grey day, but nice part of the world. I don't think I'd buy any other camera gear. I'm really happy with the camera gear I've got now. The Hasselblad X2D system is fantastic. So I don't think I'd do anything with camera gear. My Canon R6 Mark II, with the collection of lenses I've got for that, is really, really good, still really good. I just ordered the RF35 f1.4, and I'm gonna use that for video. Keen to see how that performs. I'm sure it'll be brilliant. Which means now I've got a Sigma 35 f1.4 to sell, so I guess I better get that sold. So I don't think I'd do much with camera gear. I think I have pretty much everything I want. If anything, you know, I wish I had fewer um, pieces of equipment, but I think I, I definitely have more than enough. So aside from that, what I would start doing is I would work on completing, <laughs> I would complete two products that I have in mind for this channel on photography. One of them is a field guide for car photography, which is half done, but I've got to get the other half done. And another one is a workshop on car photography, which I want to finish. I really want to write a book, and I talked about this a few months ago. I've been wanting to write a book for ages. I wrote a book a few years ago, which was very enjoyable on getting out of debt in three simple steps, which I did. Um, and you can get a copy of that for free. Um, there's a link down in the description below. I used to sell it, but now you can have it for nothing. Well, digital version of it for nothing, not a print copy. Um, so I want to write another book, and that book would be probably called To Live For, which is about the different things that have taken turns saving my life and giving me something to live for throughout the different challenges I've faced in life and triumphs. And there have been a few common threads throughout there that have kept me going, kept me alive. That's a book I really have to write. If for no one else, for me, because it's just in me and I need to get it out. Um, I would set a rigid schedule of video production here on my YouTube channel because I enjoy making videos. And I would get probably less fancy, but more frequent with my videos. Because I have a ton of topics that I want to cover. I keep them all tracked in my Milanote account, which is a fantastic piece of software for managing ideas. Um, it syncs to my phone, so it's always on my phone and my computer. I would get stuck into those and enjoy every moment of that, because I love making videos. But my schedule is so bloody full, working for these companies that I do, and driving my son to and from school every day, which I mentioned in an earlier video, is like three and a half to four hours out of every day of my life, well, weekday. So I would get stuck into that and would love it. And then I would pursue the odd passion project here and there. And one of those is something I've wanted to do for decades, and that is to do a series of car photographs in really cool 
remote outback locations. It could be multiple cars. It would certainly be easier if it was just one car, if it was, say, my Porsche Boxster, and just photograph it in incredibly unique and diverse, visually stunning locations around Australia. I would love to do that as a project. I think that would be awesome. And I want to, I want to show my son Australia by road. I want to take him across an olive oil plane, which I've done probably six times. I want to take him through the centre of Australia. I want to take him up to um, the really harsh, remote Australian outback and show him how awesome it is. So far, the only outback that he's seen has been up around Uluru, which is absolutely gorgeous. I already spend a fair bit of time with my son every day. I mean, I take him to school every day, I pick him up every day, we spend time together every single night. Lately, we've been sitting out in the backyard in front of a, a fire. We've got a big sort of steel fire pit there, and we love just sitting there having a fire. It's really, really enjoyable. My dad and I did that for years in our backyard in Mount Martha, where I grew up. And some of my fondest memories are sitting there with my dad in front of the fire, both at home and also in the, in the bush, camping up in the mountains, just talking about anything or talking about nothing love that and now I love the fact that my son loves that it's so cool so that is high on my list of priorities is to spend more time with my son out there in nature exploring hiking I'm hoping that he gets into photography at some point just because it's one of those wonderful hobbies that helps you to see the beauty around you and to slow down and enjoy your environment I'm hoping he's going to be doing photography in school next year so I'm hoping that maybe sort of lights a little spark and gets him interested in it. So that's going to be me. YouTube videos, writing, hopefully multiple books, creating workshops, field guides on photography, landscape and car photography. I want to do work with cool people, interesting people. There's a fellow here on YouTube, Ewan Bell, Melbourne-based photographer who travels the world. And he's a fabulous bloke. I really enjoy um, his company. We've uh, had lunch a couple of times together. Very intelligent, very warm, empathetic, interesting, creative, artistic person. Um, if you haven't had a look at Ewan's videos, just look him up here on, on YouTube, Ewan Bell. And the last thing, and certainly not least, but the last thing there on my list, in no particular order, is I want to do more of what I'm doing right now. I'm heading down to see my mum, to spend the day with her, go out for lunch, go for a drive, go for a walk along the foreshore here, along the beach, and just enjoy time with my parents while they're still fit and healthy and able to hang out with me. Oh, and in case you're wondering why I haven't retired yet, why I haven't retired from my traditional work into doing the work that I really love, this kind of stuff that we're doing here, well, it's really simple. I've been completely broke twice. So I'm shit scared of retiring too early and ending up broke again later on. I don't think that would happen even if I stopped work now. But given how hard my wife has also worked to pay off the house that we live in, I'm paying for another house and I pay the bills in our house. But the last thing I want to do is just say to her, honey, that's it, I quit. I'm going to start living off savings. <laughs> I don't think that would go down very well. Even if we could afford to do that, I don't think that would go down very well. That would be a smack in the face to her. So I think the time will come after my son finishes school. He's got four more years to go um, from next year onwards. He's in year eight. Next year he's in year nine. And... Once he finishes school and I'm no longer driving into him from school, then my schedule is going to free up enormously for a start. Um, I'm just trying to find a spot to stop and finish off this video. I could have sworn there was a spot up here that would have been nice to pull over, but now I've lost it. I think once my son finishes school, no, not, not I think, definitely once my son finishes school, what have we got here? Don't want to get my car all dirty. 
and I'm no longer driving him to and from school, then A, that's gonna free up three and a half to four hours a day so that I can focus more on those things that I said I want to do, was film more videos more consistently, finish off these guys, well, the guys will be finished well before then, but you know, produce stuff that I think is useful. Hang on, let me just show you here, because this is really nice. Actually, let me just get you out of here. This is very unprofessional, I know. Isn't that nice? Nice little bathing box there. Let me put the window down. Isn't this lovely? See, this is where my mum lives. So anyway, that's why I haven't retired yet. Let me take these off. It's because I just can't afford to yet. Financially, yes, it would be possible to retire now. But the reality is I really want to get to a point where I just no longer need the income from these two major corporations that I serve. And I can't really do the work to get to that point with my current schedule because too much of every day is taken up with driving my son around. I'm not prepared to work late at night to make up the difference because I need to spend time with my son. It's good for him, it's good for me too. But I would not be one of those dads who postpones my kid's childhood because the dad is too busy making money and fulfilling his own dreams. No, my son is 13, he needs me, he needs my time and attention, he just needs my company. My dad gave it to me, and I sure as hell aren't gonna deny that to my son. So, once he's finished with school, I think within a year of that, I'll be finished with normal work, and I'll just be focused on doing work that I truly enjoy, that, that lights me up and excites me and has a sense of purpose and contribution and value to people who I care about, which is people like you.